you think it's possible to actually save money, put money into a savings account while you're living in a residential vehicle? I'm here to tell you it is possible. And today I'm gonna to give you seven money hacks, seven easy ways you can save money when you're living in a vehicle. So stay tuned, this is a great list, and stay tuned all the way to the end for the number one money saving piece of advice I have for living in a vehicle. Let's get started. Nobody gonna do it for you. Got to mind your own. Hey friendlies, I'm Carolyn. Welcome to my life living in an RV. Almost seven years now, I have been living on the road. And I'm going to share with you today seven different ways I have learned to actually save money. Not just to reduce my cost of living, but to actually be able to save money while I'm living in an RV. And don't worry, this advice is going to apply to you whether you're living in an RV, whether you're living in a bus, or an ambulance, or a van or a car. These are seven tips that are going to help anyone save money, actually put money away for a rainy day or an emergency fund while you're on the road. Before I get started, do me a favor. YouTube's algorithm is wreaking havoc uh, across the board on YouTubers. I am seeing every YouTuber I watch talk about this. So do me a favor right now, give this video a thumbs up because you know you're going to like it because you've been watching me a while. But if you want to wait till the end to make sure, but just remember, give me a thumbs up, share my videos, leave a comment below, and watch as much of this video as you can. And also check that subscribe button. That really, really helps too. And even if you think you're, you're subscribed, double check because YouTube's mysteries are, they're unsubscribing people. So go ahead and check that too. Oh, Sadie decided she needs a bone. <laughs> All right, so let's get started on the seven hacks for saving money when you're residing in a vehicle. So the nice thing about living in a vehicle is you have a lot more flexibility. You have a many more options than you do for most people who live in sticks and bricks. Your rent or your mortgage payment is pretty uh, inflexible, right? It is what it is. You have to pay it out every month. Your transportation costs are going to be, especially if you're still working, there's not a lot you can do about your transportation costs. The gas is what it is and the route to work is what it is and there's not a lot of flexibility there. There there are some things that you can be more flexible on living in a vehicle. Of course, you still have your static costs like that you can't change, like your insurance, your health insurance, your RV insurance. I'm not going to talk about those things today, but there are some things definitely that you do have control over, and in some cases that you have more control over living in a vehicle. So number one, don't travel a lot. That's the best thing you can do to save money. You don't have to travel a lot. You don't have to do a thousand miles a month. Find a place to stay. Stay as long as you're allowed. If you're in a place that says you can be there for two weeks, stay for two weeks. If you can be there longer, stay there longer. That's one of the easiest ways that you can save money living on the road is just not travel a lot. Number two, when you supply up when you relocate. So if you're only moving every two weeks, wait to go to the store, wait to do your laundry, wait to do all your chores until the day that you're, uh, that you're moving, that you're relocating. This serves a couple of purposes. Number one, it saves gas. You're not making extra trips into town. That's my goal always, especially if I'm gonna be somewhere for two weeks to supply up before I go out to my camp and basically leave when I run out of supplies. So I'm kind of moving uh, according to my supply schedule most of the time. But that's gonna not only save you gas, but it's gonna save on other expenses. The more you shop, the more you spend. If you go out every two weeks and supply up on groceries, you're not gonna be tempted by all those outside influences. You're not gonna be tempted by that, you know, $5 pint of ice cream, you know, every time you go into the store. You're not gonna be tempted to stop in a store and pick up some clothes that you don't really need or, you know, it's just a lot easier to control your spending when you're not out there shopping all the time. So by reducing your shopping trips to once or twice a month, not only are you reducing the amount of gas that you're using, but you're literally going to find that you're reducing your spending. You're just not gonna have all of those 
things to um, tempt you into spending money that you and spending things that you don't really need. And that's the other thing that I have learned even before moving into an RV. And this goes with uh, trimming down your spending is really starting to analyze want versus need. And I think by going out and shopping only every couple weeks, I think you start automatically kind of training yourself because you're not constantly you know, out in the retail world, you start thinking, do I really need that? I don't really need that. And you're going to find that you start saving money. Number three, when you do go out, when you are driving, drive slower. This is huge. I don't think many of us realize how much the, the speed at which we drive determines our gas mileage. So I did a little research on this. And it says, while vehicles reach optimal fuel e economy at different speeds, depending on your vehicle, gas mileage usually decreases rapidly at speeds above 50 miles per hour. Only 50 miles an hour, you're going to start seeing your mileage decrease. And it says for light duty vehicles, like a van, not an RV, Every five miles you drive over 50 miles an hour is like paying 18 cents more per gallon of gas based on 263 a gallon. And so if gas is double that, 36 cents a mile more you're paying for gas for every five miles you drive over 55 miles. So that's my third hack for saving money while you're residing in a vehicle drive slower slow down your gas is going to go much further you're going to end up being able to save some money that's a pretty big one huh that's huge number four money saving hack learn how to cook with whole foods this is really a lot easier than a lot of people think and I've done some cooking videos cooking with whole foods but I don't always use whole foods either but the more you can cook with whole foods rice beans, dried beans, dried rice, not pre-made stuff, not pre-packaged stuff, fresh whole vegetables. The more you can do that, the more money you're going to save. You know, it, a lot of people think it's really expensive to eat healthy. It's not. You get dried beans, you get dried rice, and you get whole veggies, uh, fresh veggies, and especially if you live alone and you're only cooking for yourself like I am, you can make big batches. I can make a big batch of soup for like five bucks probably, and I can eat it all week. So it is a lot easier to eat healthy than you think it is. And that really means looking more at eating whole foods, getting away from the prepackaged stuff. Uh, you're really spending more. You're spending more for the packaging and all the preservatives and all the additives that they're putting in. So that's hack number four. Learn how to cook with whole foods, real foods. You're going to be able to stretch your food budget out a lot more and you're also going to be healthier. Number five hack for saving money when you're living in, an, in a residential vehicle is start thinking about a lot of the habits you have, a lot of the things that you do on autopilot without even thinking about it. The biggest one, and I get so much crap from trolls about this, is do you really need to shower every day? If you're living out here by yourself, or even not by yourself, do you really need to shower every day? Remember, you're living in a residential vehicle now. Most of the time, you're going to have to pay for your water and your dump stations. So conservation is key. And when you start thinking about these old habits that you have and start analyzing, okay, can I take a bath every day and still feel as clean? Is this something that I might be able to get used to? And maybe just take a shower every three days or maybe once a week and just bathe with a cup or two of water in between. It is possible, believe it or not, you can actually bathe with a cup or two of water in between. I'm not talking all the time. You're still gonna need a shower. You're still gonna need more water for a, you know, to go into town and stuff like that. But for just touch-ups in between, you'd be amazed. 
how little water it actually takes to take a bath. So these are some of the old habits that you might start thinking about breaking. Do I really need a shower every day? I mean, yeah, I've done it my whole life because I had a career and that's just what you do. You wake up in the morning, you take a shower, you go to work. But do I really need to do that now? And how much water can I save if I don't shower every day? And how much would I be able to make my 40 gallon stretch so that I don't have to go into town as much, so that I don't have to burn as much gas, so that I don't have to go spend more money on the dump station and the water station, so that I don't have to be tempted by the uh, uh, Starbucks and, and Burger King every time I go out. So that's a second part of breaking old habits. Do you really need to use that expensive face cream you've always used? You know, I used to use oil of Olay anti-aging stuff before I hit the road. True story, I did. And I hit the road and I'm like, I don't care. I wanna look my age. I've earned every wrinkle. I've learned every earned every line. I'm not ashamed to be a 55-year-old woman and to look like a 55-year-old woman. So that's just my personal perspective. If that's not where you're at, I'm not judging at all, but these are some of the old habits if you are reevaluating your life's goals and mission and your and the things that are important to you is maybe having a savings account toward a homestead or a new RV or an emergency fund is that more important than maybe you know a couple extra wrinkles on your face and if so this is a habit that you might just be like you know what do I really need this just like for me dyeing my hair when I first hit the road for the first year two years I continued to dye my hair and after a while it was like this is stupid <laughs> why am I doing this this isn't who I am anymore my bright red dyed hair looks ridiculous in the desert at least that was my opinion about my hair um, it just didn't fit me and my lifestyle anymore and these are some of the habits you might be able to start evaluating and deciding for yourself whether it's sustainable, whether it's something that makes sense for you. Just like uh, going into town uh, and breaking habits. For me, for a couple of years, maybe longer, it was a habit. Every time I went into town, I needed to get a coffee. Uh, pizza's always been my favorite, but a local coffee place, but I'd spend four or five bucks on a nice coffee when I went and ran errands. It took me a few years and I finally just got out of that habit. But that's $5 every two weeks that I'm going into town, so that's $10 uh, a month, $120 a year. Especially if you're on a budget, that, that could be pretty significant. So that's another habit. I eventually was able to break and save a little extra money. For you, maybe that habit is going out to McDonald's, you know, and what does that cost? 10 bucks, or maybe it's going out to a restaurant and, and, and you know, having a meal and having a drink. How much does that spend? How much is that costing? I'm not saying you always have to deprive yourself. I'm just saying that these are some of the habits that you've gotten into that you just kind of do on autopilot that might be worth looking at. If your goal, your priorities have changed and you would rather be saving money than maybe, you know, having a Whopper. Just something to think about. The sixth way that you can save money while you're living in a residential vehicle is to have a budget and stay within that budget. It's a really good idea so that you know what's going in every month, what's going out. And when you stick to a budget, like say a food budget, it's easy to say, okay, I've gone over my food budget, so I'm not going to spend any more on food this month. And then any extra that you have at the end of the month can automatically go into savings. So I've done a couple videos about budget budgeting and what the costs are for full-time RV living. I'll put them in the video description below uh, and also in a pinned comment. So if you want to know what it, uh, all the expenses that are entailed in living full-time in a residential vehicle, I recommend checking out that video. But the more you can stick to a budget, the more you can hold yourself accountable to your spending. And then when everything is paid for at the end of the month, whatever you have left over, you can put into saving. So that's a really, really good hack for saving money living in an RV. And finally, number seven, the biggest, I think the biggest and most important way that you can save money living in an RV. First, do me a favor, subscribe. And if you like it, if you're still here, hit the thumbs up for me if you didn't do it in the beginning. And number seven is boondock. 
Boondocking is the best way to save money living in an RV. There are free camping options all across the country. Yes, east of the Mississippi, it is a little harder to find, takes a lot more research, a lot more looking around. It's not as easy, but they are there if you know where to look. And I've done lots of videos, and again, I'll put that in the video description about how to find free camping. But imagine if you're still living in a sticks and bricks house, and a lot of people say, how can you afford to live the life you live? And when I was planning to get on the road or I was thinking about what the next chapter was of my life, the question that I asked myself is, what could I do if I didn't have to pay rent or mortgage? Imagine the freedom if you don't have to pay rent or mortgage. And so with the amount of boondocking there is in this country, we are so lucky to have so many open public lands, National Forest, Corps of Engineers, BLM, which is Bureau of Land Management in the West Coast, in the West. We have so many options for free camping. So that's the number one, the biggest hack there is for saving money living in a residential vehicle. And ask yourself this, and I want to leave a comment below. What would you do if you didn't have to pay rent or mortgage? Imagine $1,500 is what I was paying in rent in the Bay Area. That's a lot of money that I can do a lot of traveling with and still put money away. So what would you do if you didn't have to pay rent or mortgage, put your answer below. And if you're living on the road, if you're living in a residential vehicle, and I forgot to say some way that it, that you can save money on the road, leave your, uh, leave your ideas below. What do you do to save money, put money into savings, living in a residential vehicle? All right. Thanks again so much for hanging out with me. I really appreciate you. And I hope to see you again soon. In the meantime, be happy, be free, and be kind. I will see you soon. Bye.